Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Words of Diana, D, 3, 5. Hello team. Today in the Watchtower, we welcome Diana McCollum. Diana is the co-creator of the From Superheroes Network, a website specializing in superhero comedy and webcomics, videos, and podcasts. She is also a co-writer for the hilarious Text from Superheroes and is the co-host of the Talk from Superheroes podcast, where she and her co-host Andrew discuss superhero movies and TV shows. You can also find her comic-related articles at www.cracked.com slash members slash Robin YJ. That's right. Her username is Robin YJ. Our meeting was destined. Diana, welcome to Whelmed. Thank you. I am overwhelmed to be unwhelmed. <laughs> we are too. I was just <laughs> reading text from superheroes this morning. It's so funny. The oh, new thank one, you. the new ones, the new ones with Infinity War are pretty great. Anyway, oh, the new ones are so fun. <laughs> it's it's so great to have to put like eight spoiler warnings on our jokes, but they're fun to write. <laughs> Thor, Thor talking to Rocket. Anyway, we're, we're already off track. We haven't even started yet. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that our discussion episodes draw on anything and everything related to Young Justice, including both seasons of the series so far, the comics, and the video game. We will also very likely be spoiling arcs from the original Young Justice comic run in this episode, so if you've not seen, read, or played all the material and are spoiler wary, consider this your warning. And with all that out of the way, let's dive in. So I touched on um, a few of the comedy gold things that you work on uh, in the intro, but tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, what you do out in the world. Uh, out in the world, I just do superhero stuff. So um, the From Superheroes Network is my full-time job. So we do text from superheroes, as you said, is our big main thing. Um, you guys, not to be conceited, probably people who've seen it, it's superheroes text messaging each other. Yeah, we've all seen it. If you We've haven't seen, seen it, it, if you if you if you haven't seen it yet, you will by the end of listening to this. You need to go read them. We but give give yourself like an hour, though. Like there's, you'll we've get been buried. doing it since 2012, so there's like 500 of them. Yeah, and they're all gold. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so text from superheroes, um, and then I have my own podcast, uh, Talk from Superheroes, where every week uh, my co-host and I, Andrew, we discuss superhero movies and TV shows. Which is actually why I'm excited to be here, because we never talk about the actual comics. Oh, fantastic. Hey, you know what? I didn't even check to see. Have you guys done a, done a dive into Young Justice, or do you do most of the live action stuff? What do you what do? You do? Uh, we do everything. We haven't done Young Justice yet, because we've only had the podcast for about two years. So Young Justice was already pretty done by then. We'll do uh, season three, year. for sure. Gotcha. So you do stuff that's currently li currently live. Mostly currently live. We'll do like old movies, obviously. So any movie is up for grabs. But for TV shows, usually new things. And we'll do the animated movies. Um, I think Young Justice might be the first animated show we will be doing, but we will be covering that when it comes out for sure. Oh, nice. Awesome. So when did you first see Young Justice? Did you see it on its original run when it was out? Did you DVD, Netflix? What's I the story? I definitely saw it on its original run. I am, <laughs> I am almost ashamed to say I'm pretty sure I torrented it illegally because it didn't come to Canada at first. Oh. And I had to see it. So yeah, I'm in Toronto. Right. <laughs> I'm in Toronto and I've always, always loved Young Justice as we will get into. So when I saw there was a Young Justice TV show and I couldn't get it right away, I was like, nope. I'm going to nope, get that, that show. That's happening. But since then, you have boosted the signal plenty. I, I, have, I suspect <laughs> and made up for these terrible choices you made at the beginning. I mean, I've watched it on Netflix since it came on Netflix. So, right. Well, that's the thing right now. We don't have it in the States on Netflix, but oh, you guys Canada do wins. right now. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> well, we won't get into why can more reasons why Canada wins. <laughs> it's just because of Young Justice on Netflix. Is, that's oh, is that reason. what it is? Is that what it is? All right. Awesome. Well, this is the part where I normally ask, what is your history with DC and comics in general before you saw Young Justice? But that's pretty much literally what I brought you on here to talk about. <laughs> so let's just dive right in. So what is your comic history? Um, my comic history is very, the early years are very Batman centered because uh, when I was about 10 or 11, I got real into Batman because like the mid 90s were so Batman. So like Batman, the animated series. Uh, Batman 66 was showing on YTV all the time, which is like a, our Canadian t t kids network. Um, and then like, you know, Batman forever was out. 
And so all these Batman properties were out and I loved them all. And they all had Robin. I loved Robin. Um, I thought he was the greatest ever. Um, so, so yeah, I got real into superheroes that way. And then I had a cousin who was much older than me who collected comic books. My hometown didn't have a comic book store. Okay. Um, so my cousin collected comic books and he really wanted someone to talk about comic books with. So he would lend me these <laughs> huge stacks of comics, just like giant runs of everything, like every issue of Nightwing, all the really important Batman stuff, like Death in the <laughs> Family, Nightfall. Like he gave me a real solid foundation of comics. He's all, here, first one's free. Talk to me about it. It was free, and then I had to pay for it once I got a job. <laughs> so um, I think he ordered his comics in the mail. Which is crazy. I don't know anyone that's ever done that. Because, uh, uh, yeah, we didn't have a... Yeah. Have you gotten mail comics? Kind of. Mile High Comics was like a famous ad, an ad back in the day where you could buy back issue comics before there was a thing like online. That like online wasn't a thing that would mail you stuff and you could get mailed subscriptions as well through mile high. Okay. But I, even in the small town in Kentucky where I grew up, there was a single comic and game store. Oh, um, one but fancy. He, he, yeah, it was mostly a game store. He had some comics, but like my mom would buy me stuff. It was just, you know, the, the old spinner racks at, you know, like the local grocery store. And I'd be, I'd get sick, and then she would go and grab a handful of random comics and and give them to me. But the comics were so like they never restocked them, so I'd get like I, you know, I'd be sick like three times in a year or something, a couple times in a year, and I'd end up getting the same Spider-Man comic over and over again because they never restocked them or did anything. And it was probably them. like part two of three of a story, and you're like, how does this end or begin? <laughs> right, exactly. No, not again. That was the horror yeah. of the spinner racks back in the day. <laughs> right, right. But when I moved to Orange County, there was only that one store, and it was great because it got me into to gaming, role playing gaming. That's that little store, Calumbus Comics and Hobbies. But um, when I moved to Orange County, there were you know comic stores were more of a thing, and I was in you know a more metropolitan area. So that helps. I get that. So yeah, so I started off with getting these huge decks from my cousin, um, full runs, mm -hmm. so I understood everything that was going on. There were fantastic i think it was like 12 or 13 a comic book store finally opened and i went into a comic book store for the first time and i remember being really dun, dun, dun. i remember being overwhelmed but he helped me like figure out my pull list because i could only i could afford five Ooh. titles and so i got five <laughs> nice and my I love and my story. original pull list was very same that i would probably get today it was batman it was detective comics nightwing robin and young justice Young Justice was there right from the beginning of my superhero days. Wow. What may I ask what year that was? Um, actually, well, Young painfully. Justice number one came out in September ninety eight. So I guess it was nineteen ninety eight. Oh, that helps you figure out how old I was. So I was twelve, yes. Oh no, my age. <laughs> you were twelve and ninety eight? <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah, we won't talk about how old I was. Okay. So Excellent. So, but here's the thing, like I've only read a few scattered issues of that original Young Justice run. And when, so I've just got, I've got so many questions. Okay, great. So I want, first of all, let's, there's so much I want to talk about. So what drew you to the series? So Young Justice, okay, it, it sounds like it was Robin. Now you picked up Nightwing and you had the Robin series. So you were in 98. So you were Past Jason Todd, and you're into Tim Drake. Oh, Tim Drake's my boy. Right. So Tim Drake's your is your Robin. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he was then okay. yet, because I don't think I knew the differences yet. Although I had read Death in the Family, so I knew Jason was dead. Got it. So the young Justice Robin in the comics mm -hmm. is Tim. Yes, it is. Which I th which is understandably why I think some watchers were confused at first when they eventually found out that the Robin was Dick in the in the animated series. That was very, it wasn't confusing because like they, they, I thought they made it pretty clear it was Dick pretty early on, but it was jarring because as Dick, he acts a lot like Tim. Yeah. He, well, he's got Tim's outfit. He didn't have, the, he didn't have, he, yeah, he didn't have the original Dick Grayson outfit. He's a hacker, which was definitely Tim's thing mm -hmm. uh, in the comics and that kind of thing. Um, I go into a deep dive on that in my Robin episode. And also, there's some little things that they say. Like, in the very first episode, when th Cadmus is threatening to clone Dick, mm -hmm. he says, no thanks, Batcave's crowded enough already. But who else would have been in there yet? Just Bruce. Just Bruce I, I don't is think, too much. I don't, think, 
I don't think bites just too much. The ego in that cave is enormous. Because Barbara wasn't there. Barbara Barbara wasn't Batgirl yet by then. No, not by the time Dick was 12. Nope. So that's a line that has always fascinated me. Like, because when I heard that, I was like, oh. Is this Tim? This must be this must be Tim. But pretty quickly I, I realized that it wasn't. And even though he never really said a lot about it, like they don't really tell you who he is for a long time because Dick never tells anyone in the team. Yeah, right? that's fair. I think I figured out it wasn't Tim just because this Robin laughs a lot, which is very much a Dick trait. Like he is the giggling, the the laughing. Although the the, the, the language that he loves, the 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 English language stuff, does seem more Tim esque. But the yep. jokiness is definitely more Dick. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. if he had a staff, I might have been like, "That's Tim for sure." But I think not yeah. giving him a staff was smart. No, I think so too. And he pulls out the Escrima sticks, but not until like the end of season one. Mm-hmm. You start seeing it a little bit more. But we also see that he's doing like acrobat stuff on that episode where he's mm-hmm. mad about uh, Superboy getting praise and not him. So that's very yep. Dick related as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, kind of what we're talking about here is this this difference between though though Dick was a, a an excellent detective, he was this gymnast, acrobat, martial artist. Where Tim was the intellect Robin, right? Yeah. He's the tech. He's the tech guy. He's the computer programmer. He's the you know the, the strategist. I would say even, su- strategist. Yeah, the superior kind of uh, detective even to 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 Dick, and we don't get to see a lot of that. Not in Batman the Animated Series. Tim in that sh- series was much more Jason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they will. They've even admitted that was Jason in the animated series. They're like, right. we wanted to do Jason, but we didn't want kids looking up Jason Todd comics to be like, oh my God, he got beat to death with a crowbar. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was literally yep. their reasoning. So they gave him Tim's name, but they gave him Jason's qualities. Like he even had the same origin story. He was taking the wheels out the Batmobile. That's Jason. Yeah. So exactly. yeah, so Young Justice was the first time I've seen Tim and felt it was Tim, but he doesn't get a lot to do in season two of Young Justice. He doesn't, and some of it, I think, is because they used some of Tim's stuff in, for, for Dick, which I don't mind because Dick's my Robin. But it's also one of the reasons why Tim, why I love Tim so much. Tim's stuff gets cherry-picked by everyone, and it makes me sad, though. Like, I know. Like, Tim can't be the hacker because they made Dick the hacker. Right, right. I want to see him do, I want to see him do more stuff. I think he gets, yeah, Tim gets the short end of the stick. Okay, but Tim is your Robin. Tim right. is my Robin. So you started the Young Justice series from the very beginning. So who was the core team in that series to start off? The core team, well, this was actually the reason I picked up the book because the core team was so small because I'm just starting into comics my first day in there. So I knew what Teen Titans was because I'd gotten, I think my cousin let me Judas contract, but the Teen Titans oh, was a very geez. big, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah, he yeah, really yeah. wanted, he also just... gave me Killing Joke. Like I've got, I had, didn't realize till I was older that he gave me some questionable titles. <laughs> um, so I'd read Judas Contract and I knew who the Titans were, but I also didn't really know who any of them were. I'm like, I don't understand. Wonder Girl is in this, and uh, Beast Boy. I don't have any backstory on, and the team was very big. But then I saw the cover yeah. of Young Justice number one, and there's only three of them: it's Robin, it's Superboy, and it's Impulse. And okay. It's, and it's issue number one. I walk, it's like, this book might as well have been called This One's For You, Diana. I walk in, <laughs> it's issue number one, and there's only three core members, and I know who all of them are. And nice. I love sidekicks. Excellent. So, like, I don't know really a lot about Superboy, but, like, you're a young Superman. I get it. You're a tiny Flash. Okay. I can figure this out. There's only three of you. Perfect. <laughs> right. It was It was exciting as heck. I couldn't get over it. Nice. Okay. And what was, now, if I remember correctly... The episode of Young Justice called Misplaced, where um, Clarion separates the two worlds into, or the Earth into two worlds, one for 18 and older people and one for 18 and, or 17 and under or whatever people. And Shazam, or Captain Marvel, is able to transport back and forth between worlds. I understand that, that was one of the early Young Justice, kind of how the team got together stories, right? Was that in the main arc or, I, or was that a special? I'm trying to remember. That was that was pretty much the first Young Justice story, but it was actually called Justice League World Without Grown Ups because Young Justice didn't have a book yet. But it mm. was the first time we see these guys together. That's right, World Without Grown Ups. And so that was kind of the seed that inspired this Young Justice comic. Yeah, for sure, because it was the exact same team. So in that comic, we see 
pretty much all the teens superheroes helping out the little babies that are left unattended in the world. But it's Robin, Superboy, and Impulse who go and actually find the bad guy and fight him and get the worlds back merged together. They go and find but, Billy Batson. Okay, but Billy is in it, right? He goes back and Billy forth. Billy is and... in it. He still does this, I'm very scared, I'm going to die if I Shazam kind of storyline, which is really heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the... I've got to, yeah, I got to go back. I, re, I read it, but it's been a while. Are there other story arcs? So, so tell me what happens in this series. You don't need, to, not, not like everything, but like. No, no, no. We're going to go what, issue by issue. Very nice. Very nice. Welcome to, welcome to the show. So what are some of the major arcs? Like if I talk about the Titans, I'm going to talk about things like, you know, Donna's wedding. I'm going to talk about, you know, Judas contract, like we mentioned. I'm going to talk about villains like Brother Blood and and wildebeest like they're going to be the be the those touch points that draw that that pull out of that book tell me about young justice on that front do you are there arcs that you look at and say like this is a classic arc for these characters um i hate to say i kind of don't Mm, okay Um, i think young justice was made for the exact age i read it at which was 12 okay maybe like 12 to 15 each issue is like there's like three issue arcs will be like the max like there's not a lot of overarching story in Young Justice, the comics. It's, okay. It's kind of like real quick villains, a lot of jokes. It's, it's, it's made for like a younger, a younger audience. They don't even do previously ons at the beginning of each issue. It's really just like you can jump into this book at any time and there's not, it's very easy to follow. So they don't really do a lot of big arcs. So the, each each issue is in, in some way it feels relatively self-contained. Like if you, I don't know, you're sick at home and your mom picks you up a comic and hands it to you. It was a perfect Spinner Rex <laughs> book. Let's just say that. Yes. The opening, the opening page will probably be them in the middle of a fight and then they'll flash back to how the fight started. Right. Classic. Um, and it might be to be continued. But like I said, it's like usually max like three issues. Gotcha. But there are, instead of like kind of villain arcs though and stuff like that, I think a lot of the characters get arcs throughout the run. Um, and okay. oddly enough, it's the characters that don't make it into the show. Arrowette and Secret have the biggest character arcs throughout the entire run. Okay, so we talked about so we talked about the first three. So you've got you've got the Tim Drake Robin, you've mm-hmm. got Impulse, the Bart Allen, Bart Allen Impulse, uh, and you've got Connor, right, Superboy. You got Connor. So who? But who say I don't know ten issues in. Like who, who is the, who is the team made up of at that point? Wonder Girl comes on, right? San, Cassie Sandsmark's Wonder Girl? Yes. So in issue four, it's called the issue where the girls show up. <laughs> so it's very quick. <laughs> okay. They were, it was a very lighthearted book. All right. So in issue four, all the girls come. So we get Secret, who is this girl who is secret from the episode with Harm in right. the show. Right. Same secret. Um, so she's this Miss Girl, and she's a main Young Justice character. She's in it until the final issue, issue 50. Huh, okay. So Secret is a big character who got one episode of the show and was just a real, real important Young Justice character. Um, huh. And then Arrowette, who is kind of like Artemis, but isn't. Uh, Artemis was made for the show, and Arrowette is basically the same for the book. And then Wonder Girl, Cassie Sandsmark. Yeah, so I, on my Artemis episode, I did some research because Artemis was hard to find out about. Originally, uh, Stephanie Lemon was cast as Arrowette. It was supposed to be Arrowette. But then I think they got into some, they plugged, they wanted to plug this character or some of the more, char- the characters more into the story arc. And so they dug like Artemis out of a back closet somewhere she was dusty and they like, yeah and she was a villain yeah she was a villain in the comics so it was definitely if you actually managed to know who she was and that she was the sports master's daughter that you would know that she was a villain in the comics so maybe she was a villain in the you know question yourself like is she a villain or not but what i found interesting is that Arrowette's in the first season of young justice yeah, I read that. She's just kind of in the background somewhere. There's an episode where Green Arrow and and Artemis are rescuing a reporter who's being assassinated by Black Spider. And Black Spider drops the reporter out a window. And Artemis and Green Arrow save him. Well, that's King, who is, uh, Ka- who is um, Arrowette's dad. So okay. the blonde girl his daughter is looking out the window and you see her looking up at Artemis in that scene in the first season, rescuing her dad and clearly becoming inspired 
And then eventually then we get the five year jump and then we'll get probably another few year jump. And the next thing we know this, she's in her, she's 15, 16 arrow, uh, Ar uh, Artemis is off doing whatever she's doing. And now there's a, a dearth of archers for her to walk Too into. There's not enough archers now. There were so not many, there was so many and now there's none. Okay, so she looked up and she thought, that's a good idea. That, this woman, this is a hero. She saved my dad. I want to do that, right? And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that's where that's coming from, which is interesting that they set that up. It is interesting. And it's like kind of long term because now, I mean, Artemis might even still be Tigress by the time we get to season three and not have a bow. And that's what I'm thinking as well. Like she may have, she might have a bow. I think the art we saw does have her with a quiver and a bow. But even so, she has more skills than just that. Right, she has a lot more skills than that. And in the comics, she is Tigress, right? She's only Artemis for a little while, and she becomes Tigress and that kind of thing. The, the the small bits of arcs that we get with her in it. So I find that interesting. And then Secret also makes it makes me wonder because that Halloween episode kind of sticks out. I think it's an important like episode for Artemis to start to open up and things like that. And the Zatanna Artemis relationship there is really cool. But it seemed weirdly self-contained and strange. There's a lot of stuff going on that doesn't really tie into anything else in the series. And it did make me wonder, like, oh, I wonder if the secret girl is going to come back. And then I did some research about the original Young Justice. And I was like, oh, this this is a character. She's She is a very interesting, fully fleshed out yeah. character in the comics. She probably has the biggest arc of any team member because she is she was created for Young Justice. And she kind of... She only exists there. So like Tim will have stuff going on in the Batman comics right. and in the Robin comics and Superboy has stuff going on in his comics, but secret only exists in young justice comics. So her arc is told entirely through the comics and she's very interesting. It was, it was kind of sad to see her get just like this tiny role where she could only say the word secret, which isn't what she's like at all. And she's super powerful and kind of scary. Um, Cause she's actually like a void to the afterlife. Yeah. She has these like mist powers that are useful, but like she can she can take your soul to to the afterlife, which is terrifying. That's heroic. Um, well, like only the bad guys. Oh, sure. Right. Where do we draw that line? She doesn't do it often. <laughs> I, why am I flashing to Miss Martian pulling things out of people's heads? It's still it's interesting to me, though, because if they get a season three and they get a season four, there's no reason why they can't bring her back. It's not like secrets going to age. She's a ghost. No, she'll look the exact same. That's the great thing about being a ghost. Yeah. Dermatologists hate her. <laughs> She's going to look the same forever. And Superboy. Her and Superboy. And Super <laughs> they would make a great couple. Oh, no. No. If only she weren't dead. Wait. You know. Wait. Oh. Um, oh, man. That was just, I don't know what's, I'm sure that there, we'll have to ask Emily. She, there's got to be some fan fiction out there with Secret and Superboy. It's at least one story. I don't think a lot of people shipped Secret with anyone except Robin. Her and Robin had kind of a thing. Was that in the comics? That a comic? Yeah. Mm. Mm. She was into well, Tim. Well, like, I don't think Robin, Robin really like liked her as a friend, but I think she liked Robin more than that. But it never really developed into much. She would just get very, very upset when she would find out he was like dating spoiler. She would get upset when he leaves the team for a little while. She feels very abandoned. Mm. And so, and we're getting spoiler too. So... In the next season. So that's that might be interesting. I hope Tim gets some more yeah. lines. Anyway, it, so are there any, are, besides Misplaced, are there any other arcs that you noticed or any, any story seeds or ideas besides Secret that were brought into the animated series that you thought might have been used for storylines? Um, there's a couple. The Super Cycle is in the entire Young Justice comic. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, the super cycle is in issue one. It's like the, the thing they're doing is they find the super cycle issue one. So it's it's been a character the whole run. Is it the same it, do you, is it the same storyline or is there anything different between the comic and the animated? It's mostly the same. It's uh it belongs to the new gods. It's from um uh, what's their world called? Uh New Ge New Genesis. New Genesis. New God Place. So I like new that. God one. Place for the God Place. Hashtag new God Place. Mm -hmm. So the super cycle is from New Genesis. Um, they they eventually come and would like it back, but it likes them and it stays with them. The only real difference in the super cycle is that in the comics, it's more of Robin's thing. It's not Superboy's thing, mm. um, which makes a lot of sense because in the comics, Superboy can fly. Oh, right. Because his telekinetic powers are different. 
like he has the tactile telekinesis. Yeah. yeah, in the in the comics he he has tactical telekinesis, which comes up a lot, lets him fly. So Robin can't fly, so it's really his way of getting around with the rest of the team. And so he's the guy who rides the super cycle, he drives the team around, and when the other everyone else is flying off or speeding away with your impulse, he's just driving the bike. Gotcha. That makes perfect sense. But in Young Justice, I liked that in in the main comics in Justice League, it's often Superman who has this kind of connection with new Genesis and the new gods and all that kind of stuff. And in, you know, young justice, it's Superboy. So it's kind of like you got this parallel. No, it made a lot of sense in the show, especially cause like I said, the Superboy can't fly. So like you right. need a way for everyone to get around. His jumping is very detrimental to the ground. Well, that, that, yes, it is. Well, that, well that, that brings me to another question. Is Wolf in the comics? Wolf is not in the comics. Okay. To my memory or knowledge, he's definitely not in the first like 20 to 25. Yeah, Wolf. But Superboy is also the most different character in the comics. So Wolf doesn't come into play. Right. I got to ask. I got to ask them where Wolf came from, because it seems like a cute little like semi crypto thing going on. Yeah, like a real jacked up crypto. Like, a, like we're yeah. going to gritty reboot. A gritty reboot crypto. <laughs> He's scary. Wolf is scary sometimes. I've never looked at crypto and been like, that's kind of scary. I, but when I look at Wolf and I'm like, I don't know if I want to pet you. You're so big. <laughs> I'm just picture, I'm picturing they had that cartoon for a little while that was just the crypto and Ace the Bat Hound cartoon. Mm-hmm. And I'm just picturing like them having this adventure where they go into gritty reboot world. I'm just picturing them meeting Wolf and they're like, oh no, you're too much. <laughs> yeah. What is up with you? <laughs> Full of angst. That crypto. <laughs> We're a lighthearted show, sir. You <laughs> right. have to leave. Yeah. You must leave. Security. I love it. So, so speaking of these changes, then, how did you, as a fan of the of the Young Justice run of comics, how did you how did you feel about them merging these ideas from like a lot of the Titans kind of concepts with this new Superboy, new Aqualad, you know, in with the Young Justice run? Were you disappointed to find out that it wasn't Tim in a way that made you like, uh, that's just too much for me? It sounds like no, but... I was a little disappointed. It wasn't too much for me. I didn't mind the merging because, you know, when I first read the comics, I loved just Young Justice and I didn't read anything else. By the time Young Justice, the show came out, I had read a lot of Teen Titans by then. So, um, and the Jeff Johns run of the early 2000s is actually probably the closest to Young Justice the show, like the Teen Titans comic, is very close to the, Teen T- the Young Justice show. So okay. I kind of didn't mind the changes very much. I think the only, the only one that really jarred me was Superboy. The, the one that I couldn't really... I, I liked him, but I, I just never really liked it. Interesting. Because everyone else felt like themselves. Even if, like, you know, Dick still mostly felt like Dick, even though he hacked. Wally felt like Wally. When Impulse comes eventually, he definitely feels like Impulse. But Superboy is really different. Yeah, that makes sense. He's super different. He's so, not just because his powers and he can't fly, like comic book Superboy is charming and he's got a lot of charisma. He hits on everybody. He's very confident. He is not angry hardly ever. Um, He's very protective of the entire team. He's the guy who always jumps in front of like laser blasts and bullets when the team's in trouble. Whereas TV Superboy pretty much only protects Miss Martian season one. He doesn't seem to really care if anyone else is having a problem. Right. Um, And he's just angry all the time. And it just, it didn't feel like the same character at all. That's a really interesting point. And and I think it didn't bother me because, sorry, I was never a fan of that Superboy. Oh, you didn't like charming like Jerry Curl sunglasses, leather jacket (laughs) Superboy? That's my Superboy. No, no, it's not my Superboy. But my Superboy is just Clark as a teenager. But that's so not that's what, Superboy. That's what, but that's what I grew up with, right? <laughs> oh, I get and, that. And no, oh, and I, I haven't gotten him since the '80s when they Crisis on Infinite Earths and they merged everything and and did all that. But if you liked Superboy Clark, though, I mean, this Superboy is definitely not him. Like Super Clark would never just shout in anger. No, no, I agree with you, but. It, it was never trying to be him, mm. right? So it was, right. And when, when the, uh, you know, the Metropolis kid, when they used to call him back in the day, showed up because he didn't want to be called Superboy. He was one of four supermen, quote unquote, that had showed up after Superman died and um, to take care of business and do stuff. 
But I think the fact that they didn't really give him a secret identity, they didn't give him any kind of personality at the time. Like it took a long time for him to like leave Metropolis, go to Hawaii, right? Become like Hawaii's superhero, you know, develop an, you know, a, a rogues gallery that included King Shark and like all of this stuff where he started finally after like a decade started developing um, who he was as a character, I think. And I think by the time he, this Young Justice thing started, they knew who he was. Like, what are we going to do with him? You know what I mean? We want to have a Superboy, but we don't know what to do with this clone character. Is he Kryptonian? Is he not Kryptonian? Is he half human? Is he all human? But we tweaked his gen- genetic DNA. Like, they just kept retconning all of his origins and what his powers could do. You know what I mean? Like, it felt like, I don't, you guys just don't know what you want to do with this guy. So I, I didn't feel stable with him. Where the original Superboy, of course, you just know who he is. And then this Connor made more sense to me. Like, I was like, oh, okay. This makes sense for the story they're trying to tell. I hate angsty, angsty boy. But what I was expecting was angsty boy for like five seasons. And what we got was angsty boy, yes, for the first season, but we started seeing character growth and change from him fairly early on. That he was learning lessons and he tried the thing that I hate is people is characters who are like, I'm going to buck the system and never learn. Yeah, they 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 go against the system, but they always end up being right. So don't grow, have any growth. Yeah. Or they learn a lesson and forget about it for the oh, next year. Never right. on Young Justice, the show. That's what's great about it. But, no, uh, I know. Right. But I, I kind of agree with you. I think I think Connor on the show works like his attitude to his backstory makes tons of sense. He has only six months of memories or sorry, he's only been alive six months. He's just angry and frustrated. And right. I think it works. And he does have really nice growth. It's just when I first started watching the show, it was genuinely jarring because also in the comics, Tim and, and Connor developed this incredibly great friendship. And like, he's just, he doesn't really interact with either Dick or Tim ever all that much. He's very much Miss Martian kind of heavy. Um, so it just, mm-hmm. yeah, it was, that was the only real, when I started watching the show that I'm like, this doesn't feel right. That makes sense. And I think it was Morgan Jenkins. He was talking about how he had read that run with as well. And, and one of the things he brought up was that that Superboy and Cassie Sandsmark, Wonder Girl, have a relationship. They're in, a lovely you know. couple. Yeah, that's he's a big fan. He ships that hard. So he was bummed. He, he was excited that Cassie showed up when he found out that Cassie's mom was in the video game and that Cassie would show up in season two. But the whole Miss Martian thing, which he ended up loving, but he was just like, wait, what is happening? Where's Wonder Girl and what's going on? Did stuff like other, are there other things like that that change? So Cassie's on the team. Ghost is on the team. Arrow Wet's on the team. Is Tracy 13 on the team? No, um, that's most of the team. The team's pretty small for the entire okay. run, which I really like about it. It kept it so easy to read as a kid. Okay. It kept it easy to follow. Um, we would get like, Late in the game, we got some other additions. Um, the Ray joined the team eventually, and also for a really long time, a child version of Lobo. Oh God! One of his clones or something. It was there was two different versions of Lobo on the team. So first, there was one where Clara and the Witch Boy turned all the adults into kids and all the kids into adults. So Lobo got turned into a kid, and he never got changed back when everyone else got changed back. Okay. Um, so he joined the team for a while and then they were like, get out of here. And then they went to, I think they went to Apocalypse and he got cloned a bunch of times and he got even younger. And then he joined the team for quite a while. So okay. Lobo was on the team for a long time, which I'm always like, you don't That's fit. So like they have to like, weird. they have to like, he says frag all the time. Cause they like, he can't swear. He's like, I'm going to frag you up. Right. <laughs> like Logan That's class- would, classic Lobo would Lobo. be swearing. God, that's so weird. Because Globo's got this thing where they were like, it was like DC's answer to Wolverine, mm-hmm. like how to like have Wolverine, but also mock Wolverine. And make him like super powerful and gruff. And- yeah. And he had this regenerative thing where like one drop, one tiny drop of blood would regenerate itself into a full Lobo. Like, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, is that what he does? I thought he was just super strong. Maybe I've never seen him get cut. <laughs> well, you don't, you know, because they established this thing where if he... Drops blood, he makes a billion Lobos. So I don't know. He's like Groot and Wolverine all mashed together. If every Groot stick made a Groot. <laughs> if, every, if every Groot stick made a Groot. Yeah, so that's that's amazing. Um, but you said the Ray? Is that what you just said? The Ray? Like the yeah. old Freedom Fighters Ray? Um, Like the guy who shoots light and fly, yeah. Yeah, he's got he a yellow costume enough. with co- little costume, yellow costume with like the fin on his head. Um, I don't think he lost the fin by that time. But yeah, he's got like a gold suit. Oh. He didn't get a lot of storylines, but... Okay, that's really 
that's just bizarre. Like the Ray is one of the freedom fighters from like World War Two, and I don't understand that. Okay, maybe it's a new Ray. I don't know. It might have been. It might have been a rebooted Ray. I will. I will give you that. I don't remember a lot about that character. He wasn't there that long. When in doubt, parallel timeline. Parallel timeline. There you go. New person. Um, the only other storyline I can think that was kind of similar, which they did to a much, much smaller degree, was that um, there's a couple issues where Superboy is acting kind of weird. He's being really like he's not following Robin's rules, like Robin's lead, and he's just being kind of a jerk to everyone. He's being weird to Cassie. Um, and then you eventually find out that he's actually for like five issues, a clone of Superboy called Match. Oh. So that's kind of very similar to me of like the, the clearly the Red Arrow reveal at the end of season one. Um, but he wasn't doing all that malicious of stuff. He was just kind of being a jerk and he was trying to make Young Justice look bad to the public so that they would get disbanded by the government. Interesting. So that's where Match comes from. Yeah, well, Match came from like Superboy's solo comic, but he just, he appears, he appears in a couple issues and you're like, oh, I guess that's not been Superboy for like the last five issues I read. I got to go reread them and look for clues and stuff. And it's kind of like when you rewatch right. Young Justice and you're like, I need the clues about Red Arrow. That's right. That's right. I need all the background stuff. I don't know what that feels like. So um, I've never rewatched a show in my yeah, life. Yeah, because, right. Because they kind of took Match in Young Justice and merged him with Bizarro. Eventually they do later, yeah. Uh, in the comic? Or because because Match shows up, the issue that had Match in it, he like burns his S into his chest by looking in a mirror. So it turns out to be a backwards S. And he doesn't really communicate. He's like a berserker. Oh, that's not and that kind of that's stuff. That's not He's, the match in the Young Justice comics, right? And this is what I'm saying. Like, so they took they took the match from the Young Justice comics and they merged him with Bizarro from the Superman mythos, where Bizarro originally was from just this weird backwards planet where everything's backwards. But then, in many modern interpretations, he ends up being a like in the Superman animated series, he was a uh, a clone of Superman gone wrong, and that's where that was first introduced. And now in Young Justice, they introduced this character. And I was like, oh, this is Bizarro. He like burned his backwards S into his chest and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And then they're like, we called him Match. And I'm like, I, well, I, I don't know who that is. Yeah, because he's a match to Superboy. Of course. I'm like, okay, I guess they didn't, didn't want to use Bizarro. I don't know who this Match person, what does this name come from? And that, that makes much more sense now. It does, because I guess, but also I guess Superman exists in the Young Justice TV show, so you don't want to do Bizarro, because then it's Bizarro. Well, but we haven't seen Bizarro. No. And that's the thing. Like, we haven't seen Bizarro in Young Justice, so Bizarro might not exist in adult Superman's, like, pantheon. So they might have him just in the Justice Superboys person. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I will. I do know, I do remember in a later Teen Titans run, which still has basically the same core as Young Justice, Match does kind of turn that way somehow. I don't know how he got that way, but he gets more Bizarro-like oh, when he shows up. So I think he has an arc of being an exact clone of Superboy to getting more Bizarro-like in the comics. Interesting. So he, the clone, as it's growing up, is getting off off the rails. Yeah. Getting weird. Maybe he's, like, deteriorating. So, huh, but he, um, he didn't have a very nefarious plan like Roy. Like it wasn't like, oh, the team's destroyed now. This, this guy has infiltrated right. us. He's kind of just like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> he wasn't very good at it. <laughs> right. I'm trying to be a hero. Yeah. The worst, hero? the worst thing he did was he, while they were having a rescue mission, he like blew up Mount Rushmore on purpose. So they would get in trouble to sabotage the team. And like, they did get in trouble, but you know, it's not like mind controlling the Justice League. Right. Right. Not at the Why same level. Bagging on, bagging on Roy right now. Well, I mean, it's just the only similar storyline. Oh, right. I would think people would be pretty upset about Mount Rushmore. I think some people, some people would be really upset. I mean, in real life, yes. In the DC universe, when aliens are invading all the time and stuff, I'd be like, yeah, of course Mount Rushmore is going to get destroyed, guys. We're like, they always, hard. they always attack. They always attack a monument. Always do. Like they know, like they know what they mean. Yeah, they don't know that we like that thing. Right. Just like they carved a bunch of faces in a mountain. That's, I don't know what that is. And fly by. Yeah, that's very weird. And then the only other thing really that's taken from the comics on the show, I think, that really, really stands out is Red Tornado being like their dead mother. Oh, that's a thing in the comics. That from issue one, Red Tornado is there looking after them. He actually, uh, I think he'd been out of the comics for a long time at that point. But he's like he's there in like mm. the Happy Harbor cave, kind of like just shut down. 
and he boots back up to talk to them and they're like oh we thought you were a statue and he's like i actually thought i turned myself off because i thought i had no humanity but you guys have proven that i do and they're like how do we do that he's like i find you really annoying (laughs) (laughs) and that's how red tornado knew that he was still partially human was he found impulse so annoying he had to turn himself on to be like be quiet yeah that tracks all that tracks (laughs) So he lives in the cave with them kind of throughout the run of the entire book. And he's their mentor. He helps them out. Interesting. He actually has a lot of storylines as well. I think they gave all the all the big arcs to characters that didn't have their own books. Okay. Because like I said, Robin, Superboy, Impulse, they all had their own books at the time. So they didn't get a lot of arcs, Mm. a lot of things that changed who they were. They, They probably the writers probably weren't allowed. Right. That made sense. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the arcs went to like Red Tornado. He was trying to find his humanity. He had to go find his adopted daughter and try to reconnect with her. Secret has this big thing of just trying to get her memories back and try to figure out who she is. And she finds out like halfway through the book that she's Harm's sister. Oh, she didn't know that from the beginning. No, when she died, she lost all her memories. Interesting. And is the, I did a little bit of a research on Harm, but I don't remember much of it. There's, there's not a lot to say about him. Right? Because it felt like there wasn't much to say about him in the in the series either. In the series, he's kind of a chump, I will say. He's a little bit of a weird chump. Yeah. He's like it he's like an emo one like a really bad stereotype of an emo vampire LARPer, you know, like I met in the like nineties. That's an on point description of comic book harm. Because in the show, uh, oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, totally. Because in the show, it made sense that he got this magic sword, and then he could fight Zatanna and Artemis. I'm like, okay, you got a magic sword. That's great. In the comics, he doesn't have any powers. He has a cool car. He's a teenager who like still lives with his parents. It is it is 100 percent established that he lives with his parents. He just dresses up, and he's like a really good fighter who's really smart. So he's taking down everyone. I guess in kind of like a Deathstroke way, because he's just a really smart, good fighter. Right. He's beating Superboy. He's beating Impulse. He's beating Wonder Girl. I'm like, you have no powers. And then his arc ends in the next issue when his dad shoots him. Oi! That's what? how Harm's defeated. Harm beats them. He gets away. He's like, I've kicked your butts. I'm out of here. And then he gets home, and his dad, who's distraught because like he had killed his sister and he was threatening his parents all the time, just shoots him in the chest. And that's the end of Harm. It was oddly brutal and abrupt for this very lighthearted comic. And it also made uh, me wonder. I'm like, though the team has no idea that he's dead. Like he was just killed by his dad. I, I don't. I don't even know. What it's to not say a great issue about that. It's. Not- I love this book. It is not a good resolution to that character in any way. <laughs> Feels a little anticlimactic. Yeah. He has this huge, like, three-issue three, uh, three issue arc, which is a lot for them, for this comic. And he's really great. He beats everyone. Um, I really liked him for a while because he considered Robin the most dangerous member of the team. And I'm like, yeah, he is. Um, but and then he gets <laughs> killed by his dad. And I'm like, I could do that. But there's all kinds of levels of messed up around that in and of itself. But also, like, we talk a lot on the show about... Give your protagonists agency. Mm-hmm. Like, have them do stuff. Yeah, they just get defeated and then they never see him again. Unless you're really making a point or setting something up or, you know, doing something really unique and interesting. Don't do that. No, don't do that. It wasn't. <laughs> even even as a 12-year-old who didn't know a lot about story structure yet, I was like, this isn't good, right? This isn't what I wanted. Right. This doesn't feel, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. So so how long did the run go on for? Is it still ongoing oh, now? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I actually don't think there's been a Young Justice since the original run. So the original run was like 55 issues, I think. Oh, okay. That's really good. It's pretty good. Oh, it did. It was. It did amazingly. It went forever. Um, so the original run mm. was about 55 issues, and they had a couple specials and stuff. Um, and then what happened was Jeff Johns took over writing a couple things and he really wanted to bring teen titans back because there wasn't Uh, currently a teen titans book there was young justice and there was the titans um so he kind of merged those two teams in this special called graduation day oh i think i remember that yeah so then so then young justice ended and a new teen titan book started that was half teen titans half young justice members young young justice and i don't think there's been a young justice book since then which why i was so shocked when the show was called young justice I was like, there hasn't been a Young Justice book since like 2003. Yeah, yeah. Other than like the ones based on the show now. Right. Well, they couldn't quite call it Teen Titans either. Because well, there was already a Teen Titans show. Well, there was already a Teen Titans. <laughs> yeah, there was already a Teen Titans show. <laughs> there was that. 
I'm not a huge fan of that show. I liked it at the time. I mean, some of it still holds up. Oh, I, I, honestly, honestly, there are a lot of people that I have a lot of huge respect for that love that show. It just wasn't. It wasn't my Titans, and it wasn't like what I wanted it to be. I wanted. I wanted the Titans to be taken seriously, and it had some seriousness, and it also had. It was just not aimed at me. That's I all get it that. was. And it was a- the group it was aimed at. It did a great job, and it got a lot of people in the comics. And I'm like, I and loving Teen Titans. I'm like, oh, well, how am I going to argue with that? Can't argue with that. You can't argue with that. Now, this is the thing, though. Teen Titans, the the cartoon, is actually a lot closer to the tone of the Young Justice comics. Just mm-hmm. like some mm-hmm. serious storylines, like when Harm is killed by his dad, but just like a lot of lighthearted stuff. Just a lot of ribbing, a lot of jokes. Um, a lot of just yeah. background humor going on. So to me, Young Justice, the show was actually more in tone to Teen Titans. And the Teen Titans show was actually more in tone to Young Justice, the comic. Tone to the Young Justice. It's, it's weird. Interesting. No, no, that that's fascinating to me. I've never heard that parallel made. Well, is there anything, I'm, I think I've got the answer to this question, but is there anything that's, that was inside those 55 issues and specials that you think might be, be giving us a glimpse or insight into anything that might be upcoming in season three or four. I'm guessing maybe not. I really don't. It was just, it was so episodic. It was, it wasn't big arcs. Yep. The arcs they did have weren't all that serious. It was never like world ending stuff. Like there's one issue where they play mm-hmm. a baseball game to save a, to save a planet from alien invasion. It's just, it's very lighthearted. <laughs> that definitely sounds like the Teen Titans cartoon. Exactly. It's very, they're, they're called, the, the shows are called the wrong things. Basically. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah, I just I don't think I don't think there's a lot in there. I mean, I can I know a little bit about Arrowette, obviously already. I would love to see Secret come back. Um there's another character who enters later called Empress who's really cool if we need more Teen Titans, but I think we've got a lot of them. No, I agree with you, yeah. But I mean they're going to be because they're doing these time jumps. We need I more think characters. Part of, I think part of the reason they're doing the time jumps is so that they can introduce, you know, like a legacy, you know, of characters. And we can see these characters, these first characters growing up, but we can also, you know, get layer and layer and layer of new characters in. And I think it's probably easier to tell stories when you've got generational gaps than it is if you try and put Blue Beetle on the same team as Robin, as the same team, you know, as as Dick Grayson, as the same team as Superboy. And they're all introduced at the same time and they're all the same age. It's Right, right, exactly. And this way you can kind of layer things i mean they changed beast boy a ton for young justice because he's one of the original well he's one of the early titans so having him be younger than miss martian and of course his origin's totally different in the comics and things like that you know it, it's very different but the heart of the character is still there and i like seeing him on the screen and what they've done with him and his relationship with characters so i am interested to see more i'd like to see more secret too because i i don't know what i've kind of read a little bit of and then what you were telling me about sounds like she's fascinating she is fascinating, and I think she fits well on the tone of the show, actually, because she always kind of was a little dark for the comic book because they had this running thing where, like, any person who she didn't like who looked into her eyes would just freeze in fear because they could see the abyss through her eyes. Like, she was kind of like, for, for, for a while, she gets mentored by the specter because she's just so powerful oh, and so geez. scary. Yeah. So she's... It's not okay. <laughs> that's who she was bad the specter is a complicated man and she was a complicated girl scepter is the angel of god's vengeance well she was a void into the abyss so they had a lot in common (laughs) i guess they did yeah she would she would be a great addition to season three though (laughs) <laughs> like Spectre and Dr. Fate on the same team. And oh, God, Dr. Fate. It just drives me, me so much. Just so funny. It's like Dr. Fate's like, you will have order. And I'm like, okay, thank you, Darth Vader. And uh, and the Spectre's like, I am vengeance. Like, you know, just like, oh, you did this thing. Now I'm going to do this horrifying, nightmarish, hellish thing to you that may or may not be proportional response. It's usually not a proportionate response with the Spectre, that guy. Pretty much not. That guy's got a weird moral compass. It's not pointing quite the right way. <laughs> it's a little off north. Right. Yeah, so Hero is loosely termed. Yeah, so her, that was her that mentor. Character. So she's nice. she's a complicated character with a lot of layers. She's She's the only thing that I would be like really interested to see from the comics to get explored a lot more. So I thought Harm got like right. just as much as he needed. Red Tornado kind of fit perfectly. The Super Cycle has been fitting perfectly. Um, and there's there's not much more other than just like the team dynamic. And they, they used to live at Happy Harbor as well. 
Yeah. Ah. Did they, did, wait, did they, were they in the cave? Yeah, they were in the cave. The cave's the same. Oh, interesting. Um, I like in the comics, oh, cool. they don't actually like, for a long time, they don't repaint it or anything. They just have like little post-it notes over all the old Justice League symbols that have like the Robin R. <laughs> <laughs> They're very lazy, those boys. That's really funny. I love it. Well, uh, is there anything else then you wanted to add about the the run? Or is there any particular, I know you said they were episodic, but are there any particular issues or arcs that you might recommend to people if they want to drop in and check these things out? Sounds like they can check it out pretty much anywhere along the run. You can really check it out anywhere. It's amazing. Let me just, I'm just like rooting through the comics sitting next to me to be like, what ones do I really love? <laughs> yeah, like what, what are some of your favorites that you think people might enjoy? I mean, I think my favorites are just the, the really early ones. Oh, actually, this one was this one was so great. The only actually I forgot about this one, which is one that like does feel like the show. So there's this one issue where the Justice League's deciding whether they get to keep being a team and okay. Young Justice. So the Justice League's having like a conversation and like the moms and stuff. And then Young Justice is just having like a camp out and there's no okay. fight. It's just them talking and it's just them discussing like what it means to be a hero and whether they want to do it forever. And like, if they're scared about the future, it's the first time they find out that Connor can't age and he's in like denial about how happy or sad he is about that. It's this really introspective issue that, that does feel more like the show, just like literally no conflict. It's just them all talking for an issue. What's the, uh, what issue is that? That is issue six. It's very early or wait, no, it's issue seven. Issue seven. Does it have a title? The mother of all battles. Because the moms are arguing in one half of the comic, and then the kids are getting along in the other half. <laughs> of course. Yes. So it's the it's it's a it's a pun. There's a lot of those. If you're gonna read the Young Justice yeah. comics, get ready for puns. Good to be warned. Good to be warned. And yeah, the later stuff with uh, when Empress gets in is pretty good around like issue forty. So uh, those are those are my recommendations. Nice. We'll put some links to those in the show notes once I track down the mother of all battles here. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll put some links to those in, to co- and Comixology as well as uh, checking out your friendly local comic store, which is always good. And that's it. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Where can people find you here on Earth Prime once you leave the Watchtower? On Earth Prime, uh, my website, From Superheroes Network, is on Twitter at From Superheroes or From Superheroes.com. And I'm on Twitter at Words of Diana. I tweet about Robin, Batman, and Bucky a lot. So if you're looking for any of those things. I love sidekicks. You're looking for sidekicks. <laughs> the Bucky Robin crossover team, at least the original Bucky from back in the day. That would be interesting. Yeah, you know, all the characters that were supposed to stay dead and never come back. And they did. That's right. Oh, gosh. Bucky and like Winter Soldier and Red Hood. Now I've got a whole thing going on in my head right now. Oh, yeah. The parallels with them are insane. They both came back the same year. They both had been dead for decades. And then they both got rebooted in the same year. It was weird. Interesting. It's the cultural... The world was just ready for dark sidekicks in the year 2005. Apparently. apparently. All right. Well, thanks to everyone else for sharing some time with us. You can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on Tumblr at the YJFiles.tumblr.com, our website, CrashingTheMode.com, and our email address, whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. You can also now find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoy our show, please consider sharing it with a friend. You can also support the show by giving us a five-star review on uh, Apple Podcast or your podcatcher of choice. The ratings really do help others find the show. If you leave us a rating, please let us know, especially if you're outside the U.S. We have to look a little harder to find those. And even though season three is almost here, please continue to spread the word to friends and family about the series. Hashtag buy YJ Comics on Comixology and get yourself up to speed for the season three premiere. And as always, stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Stay whelmed.